know, had a really great relationship, had a, a wonderful career and very successful career in the mining industry. But um, after building a, you know, a really good portfolio and having so many people ask, how, how do you do it? This is Property Investory where we talk to successful property investors to find out more about their stories, mindset and strategies. I'm Tyrone Shum and in this episode, we're speaking with Jane Slack-Smith, a farm girl from Dubbo who became inspired to get into property and has since built a multi-million dollar portfolio and property advisory empire to boot. Uncover the story behind her transition from mines to means and learn from her. Also, before we delve into this episode, go over to propertyinveststory.com and subscribe to receive your free property investor case studies where you'll learn how to generate passive income from your properties. Go there now to sign up for free. So, what does Slacksmith do in any given day? On a given day, I might have three to four discovery calls with new clients who are looking for finance and we just work out whether we're a good fit in working together because I, I don't believe that uh, everyone you know works uh, together well so for me it's really important in, in providing um, some understanding of what each party needs in a relationship so that we can go on because I I'm, I'm really want to be part of people's long-term goals rather than a, a one and done kind of uh, loan provider mm. and um, and then the rest of the time we're in, usually in pre-production for podcasts and videos and, and looking at how to do virtual reality exciting things with our new videos and, and looking at um, how we can update our courses and material for, for our students. And a lot of time is spent um, assisting the community on our private Facebook pages in answering questions and putting them in touch and, and getting them to the results that they want. So yeah, pretty full day. That's Jane Slack-Smith, a mother, a minor, an award-winning mortgage broker and property investment educator who is the author of the popular book, Your Property Success. However, it didn't all start that way. As a uh, girl from the bush, um, from a farm in Dubbo, I was uh, one of the first to attend a university in my family and I did a mining engineering degree and specialised in explosives. So I spent the next 18 years working in the mining industry which was very exciting and in that period of time I uh, knew that I was probably just working for my money day in and day out and doing nothing with it and I knew I had to do something and I had a you know come to Jesus moment with a reading of Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad and uh, started to think more about my future and what I wanted to achieve. So I took my risk assessment skills of understanding risks and likelihoods and consequences of risk to property investment and built a property portfolio from, you know, a mere $45,000 start um, way up to a multi-million dollar portfolio today and decided along the way that I wanted to teach other people how to do it too. So I essentially started looking into how I could assist people in uh, their education on how to find the right property in the right area to get them to their goals quicker. And I realised back in 2004, 2005, that if I did that without having professional indemnity insurance, I was probably going to um, put some risk around my own portfolio. And the only person or profession at that stage that could talk about property was a mortgage broker. So I decided to do that part-time and that lasted about three weeks because of the demand of people wanting some assistance and I went full-time and since that start way back in 2005, I've won um, Australia's Mortgage Broker of the Year twice and um, Property Investment Advisor runner-up in a, in a recent award which is, I'm really proud of and in 2012, I decided it was time to put all the education and knowledge around property investing and building my portfolio and all of the thousands of investors I'd worked with into play and started Your Property Success, which is um, an online education platform that assists people in getting to their property success. So that's essentially me. Slacksmith describes herself as a person who's perpetually curious. I 
always want to learn more and I'm always signing up for courses and something like, um, you know, James Patterson teaches how to write because I'm interested in how to convey my message and be a better writer. I don't necessarily want to write a book. I have written one book, Your Property Success with Renovation, but, uh, you know, I don't plan on writing anymore. But it just intrigues me uh, looking at people who excel at what they do and, shortcutting the path of pain that they've been through and learn from their mistakes and learn their recommendations so I can can put those things into place. So, you know, I do courses on photography, writing, you know, marketing, obviously, finance, and I'm always uh, looking to learn more and I'm always curious about what people are uh, doing so that I can learn from their experiences as well. Wow. Where do you find the time to do all this? <laughs> just have to get up early you can achieve anything <laughs> now not only is slacksmith's professional life amazing her ability to run that side by side a busy home life is remarkable slacksmith explains how she balances so many roles and what brought her into property investment my husband was the consultant and then in, in IT and you know with our portfolio he uh, stopped work when he was oh, 42, I think. So he is now following his dream, which is being a full time artist. So he does photorealistic art, and uh, you can have a look at toddsimpsonart.com. But uh, beautiful works, and you know, they go into the Archibald and the portrait um, exhibitions in, in London, etc. So um, he's following his dreams, and unfortunately, I don't I don't have a, a hobby that I could uh, check out with and and spend all day at. My hobby is kind of teaching other people. So, you know, I'm I'm also following my dream and doing what I love, which is helping others. And I've got a nine year old son who um, keeps us entertained. As as of the weekend, I am the proud uh, completer and designer of a Nerf gun Arsenal storage <laughs> shadow board. So, you know, the things that I can do are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Our family always is fun, especially with children as well. <laughs> you never know when someone's going to jump out from behind a wall and shoot you with a Nerf gun in my house. <laughs> Why did you choose mining of all things? Well, look, I, I had a very wise person tell me once that it wasn't really important what you studied it was the fact that you learned how to study and learned how to learn mm. so I knew that I knew I had to have a scholarship to go to university and you know my family um, couldn't afford to to send me off and uh, so I looked at where the scholarships were and where my skills were and you know they say that you have three careers in a lifetime these days and that's on today's you know uh, life expectancy it's going to be a whole lot more in a few years time I think it's more so, than three now <laughs> yeah. So I knew it wasn't a job for life. I knew it was an opportunity to learn. So um, I had a lot of strengths in engineering. They were looking for girls in engineering then. And although I don't believe in affirmative action at the time, um, I kind of stumbled into the fact that um, there was promotion of women in engineering. And I looked at all the different engineering courses and the, a lot of them just seemed to be boring. You know, you're designing something and you never get out there and do things. And mining engineering you learned a bit of mechanical, a bit of civil. You did surveying and geology, and you, you're in a ute driving around big mines, mines, you know, telling dozer drivers what to do and blowing stuff up. And then I worked underground for a year on night shift as a labourer because there's a belief that you can't become a manager and tell other people what to do until you've done it yourself, which I, you know, grew up with, you know, cleaning up stables on the farm. So, you know, we were always pitching in and doing things. But I was the first girl to work in underground coal mines Another another girl and I turned up at the same day to different mines after they re changed the laws back in 1989 to let women underground and everyone went on strike. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's a, it's a mad, amazing to think in our, our lifetime there was still those kind of things going on. But there was, you know, some adversities to get over and, and um, you just had to get in and do the work and prove that you were willing to learn and, and that's what I did and, and you know, I had a really great relationship, had a, a wonderful career and very successful career in the mining industry. But um, after building a, you know, a really good portfolio and having so many people ask, how, how do you do it? And sitting on a mine site and Mount Isa waiting to push a button and for a, you know, a mountain to blow up kind of thing, people were asking what to do. And I was doing all these kind of toolbox talks and mine sites all around Australia. And I thought, <laughs> well, if people are really interested, I could teach this. And, uh, and I like teaching. So, yeah, that's, that's how I kind of moved from mining onwards. 
So, how does one go from first woman qualified to run an open cut coal mine in New South Wales to one of Australia's top 10 finance experts? What I was doing was I was at that time I was working for a company that was an explosives company and as an expert, different mine sites would turn ask me to come and design blasts for them or do safety audits oh. or you know um, do incident analysis of something that went wrong. So I got by virtue of that to go to most mine sites throughout Australia. Ah, oh, okay. Gotcha. And whilst I was on the mine sites, they'd go, hey, what have you been up to? I'm like, ah. Oh, well, I'm going back to Sydney to renovate a house this weekend. They're like, what? Tell me about it. So naturally one thing would lead to another and they're like, how are you doing this? I'm like, how are you not doing it? We're on the same income. So (laughs) then we started chatting about, well, how can you, you know, make your money work for you rather than not work for you? You work for your money. Mm. So to Robert Kiyosaki. So, yeah. Coming up after the break, we'll delve into Slacksmith's journey on how she became a property investor and grew her multi-million dollar portfolio. And then nine months later, that $425,000 property was revalued at $700,000. So I did, I took a personal loan out and did a $50,000 renovation. And then I pulled out $100,000 and went to Sydney and did it for the next property and pulled out money and did it again. Also hear about her role as a mentor to hundreds of people through a vast educational empire. For me, it's about the stories and it's about the people and it's about getting people to a place that might just be an aha moment. As you know, Slacksmith shared that she got into the mining industry after completing her university degree and that's where her property investment journey began. Well, I, I like most people... Um, allowed my, I you know, went from a university um, income of ten thousand dollars a year to a, a first year out graduate income of like seventy five thousand dollars a year, and my lifestyle expanded to my <laughs> quite income. substantially. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I remember getting my first credit card, going, "Oh my gosh, this is amazing! I can buy an Oriton handbag, and I don't have to pay for it." And, uh, and then I realized a few months later that I did have to pay for it. But um, so I. I I was very much into that disposable um, world. You know, I had hadn't come from an affluent background, so having money, you know, I could help my parents. I could help put my sister through school and put her through university. I could, you know, go on holidays. So I I did all of that, and I didn't save a lot. And then when I hit twenty eight and sat down and had the the moment with uh, rich dad poor dad, I thought, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I'm going to have to help my parents when they retire um, because they'll be on the couple's income because they haven't got it, you know, uh, investments that they can fall back on. And uh, I've only got a certain amount of time to do this. So I smartened up. I read a lot of books about budgeting, and you know, I had. I decided to withdraw all of my pay every week and, you know, I'd have green money, silver money, gold money, so I'd have savings money, money I could spend and save and, and money that was, you know, available for very long-term savings and I built up savings of $45,000. So I bought my first property for $425,000. $25,000 went straight to stamp duty, so I had a 5% deposit. And then nine months later, that four hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar property was revalued at seven hundred thousand. So I did. Fantastic. I took a personal loan out and did a fifty thousand dollar renovation. And then I pulled out one hundred thousand dollars and went to Sydney and did it for the next property and pulled out money and did it again, and built up the portfolio very quickly by using no more than that first forty-five thousand dollars to contribute to buying the properties. Wow! How did you feel when you first bought your first property? Oh my gosh, like I felt since every property since, buyer's remorse. You're like, oh my God, what have I done? And then uh, you sit down and go, I've done the numbers, I've done the research, I understand the risks, I've minimized the risks, it's right. (laughs) I think when I speak to clients and, you know, we've got people um, putting in offers on properties every day and and I do deal reviews for for our clients to just make sure that it's uh, the property fits their buying criteria and every single time, you know, those people who are not feeling buyer's remorse, I have a, f- a few worries about and, <laughs> and I make sure I ask the extra questions because I think you need to, you know, we're, we're not talking about, you know, buying a packet of chips. We're, we're playing with hundreds of thousands of dollars and potential to create, you know, financial freedom in the future. So it's a big decision 
and uh, and I think you know it it should be taken um, not lightly and uh, yeah so buyer's remorse is definitely I, I think that's a good thing. Slack Smith explains she was very resistant to property investing when she initially got started, even though it is her preferred investment vehicle to become wealthy. Very resistant. My boss kept saying to me, when are you going to get a mortgage so I know that I have you for life? (laughs) So I just thought, oh my gosh. And the word mort is death, right? So mortgage means death. So I was thinking, well, there's no way I'm going to be tied down to the white picket fence. You know, I'm footloose and fancy free. I'm only 28. And um, so I had a lot of fear around the property investment. And like a lot of people, I didn't realize that um, you could invest in property without owning your own home. So, you know, uh, so I decided that I needed to create a financial future of security for myself. So I, after I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I went and signed up to Australian Stock Exchange courses and I did all of their courses and then I spreadsheeted and paper traded all of these shares just you know, on a spreadsheet, didn't actually put my money in my pocket for anything and um, I couldn't believe it. I'd come up with this great, you know, uh, analysis of a company and they'd then go and change the board or they'd change their strategic direction and all my my research had gone out the window I could think I've got no control and then um for my 30th birthday I decided that I would pay for three financial planners to assist me in, in putting it together a plan together and two of them just wanted to go into shares and and that's when I found out that Financial planners were really salespeople. It was the para planners in the background that were doing all the work, but they were only confined by the products they were allowed to sell. So, so that really um, confused me. And then one guy wanted to day trade for me shares, which I don't even think financial planners legally could do. And um, and I asked them about property, and they said, "Well, financial planners are not allowed to talk about property because it's not a listed property class, uh, you know, um, security class." So that all changed only just a few years ago. So I was kind of on my own. So I made this investment, my $45,000. I took the um, – I, I basically monitored what the shares would have been done under the recommendations of the two brokers and financial planners, and I did my property investing at the same time. And obviously, you know, I made like 175000 in nine months with the property investing and – the one lot of shares that if I put my forty five thousand dollars in would have gone up to fifty, and the other one went down to about forty two. So There's a clear it kind of did, yeah. And my husband had done property investing in New Zealand, where he was from, and he he had a little business um, whilst he was at uni mowing lawns, and there was like a twenty four year old guy who said come mow my investment property lawn and then he said you did a good job come mow the other ones and and my husband said how did you get so many and he said the first one's the hardest and once you get the right one for the first one you can build your portfolio so um he was really inspired and and when we uh started dating he was telling me about property investing and I was still very reticent so I was a reticent latecomer to property investing albeit the fact that I did buy my first property when I was 31. After building a multi-million dollar property portfolio, she wanted to share what she had done and that's where her love for teaching started. Um, It was more about sharing. So I thought, well, if I can do this, I want to share this with my family and friends. So I actively talked to my best friends and, you know, my sister have multi-million dollar property portfolios and I wanted to assist them. And then, you know, their friends would hear about what they'd done and how they'd you know, located a great property in a great area and rented it out quickly or added some value through renovation. But it was all about the location that I felt was missing in the education. Mm. And that, as an engineer, that kind of, you know, Excel spreadsheets and using the internet, that was where my forte was. So, you know, just teaching people how to do that was important to me. And then essentially um, when people kept asking, I thought, you know, at some point I need to have some um, protection around my portfolio in case, you know, someone takes my my uh, story as advice and it goes wrong. And the only way I could do that was a mortgage broker. So for me, you know, although loans and financing is, is you know, arguably the starting point to building a portfolio and understanding that and getting it right, I saw so many people 
set up with the wrong loans and, you know, with uh, banks who'd been trying to help them out but hadn't structured them correctly and had limited their ability to buy and not achieve their goals. So, in my whole conversation with people around their finance needs is about what the goals are and it's it's about the property. It's not about the loan and how the property fits into the portfolio to achieve the goals and the time frame that people want. So um, so I guess I, I did things a little differently in the sense to me it was all about um, that journey and having long-term clients and being on that journey for the long term with them. So, you know, I provide different services to most mortgage brokers because you know, I want to facilitate, um, I think, the total package of what people need when they're buying properties that, you know, it's it's difficult to get when you're starting out. And it, it's sometimes, you know, um, it's really hard for people, married people who one's really keen to invest and the other isn't. And there's a lot of tension around that. And, and often there's a fear of losing, you know, hard-earned nest egg. And it's about taking the fear away by understanding the risks and minimising those risks and having a conversation about it's a step-by-step process. The location is key, you know, and that's why we spend so much time where well, we've developed, you know, the suburb selector software and, and all these, you know, different location um, uh, courses and things to really help people target that. And, you know, tools like RP Data Professional and um, that I, I personally – um, for my mortgage pre-approved clients, I pay the three months of the pre-approval period to give people access to that because I'm I'm so focused on helping people, you know, make sure that they have the right resources and and to be able to find the right property in the right area. And so there's some great products, you know, Ripe House and Microburbs, and you know, there's a lot of free and unpaid um, resources. Just take a little bit of extra work to to make them work for you. But there's also a great a lot of um, paid resources that people can use. And I think just having everything in one place where people can learn where to do it is really important as well. Slacksmith points out that she's a really low risk type of personality, and every single thing she did would have to ensure there were minimal risks involved, which led her to learn from others. Being curious and, and a lifetime learner, I also wanted to read everyone's books. And, you know, I've got 135 books on property on my bookshelf at the moment. And wow. I really wanted to learn from others' mistakes so I didn't make them. So, you know, I'd go to these seminars and look, let's be honest, there's not that much new stuff in property investing. And you'd go to the seminars and and they'd be saying the same thing. But I then wanted to listen to the stories about what they did wrong because most people get up and go, I lost everything and then I rebuilt it. I want to know what they the mistakes they made to lose everything so that I never had to do that. So I had the opportunity to jump, you know, on the shoulders of those giants, um, jump ahead and over the mistakes that they'd made. So I can't claim um, a devastating investing blow at all. I think I thought at one stage that um, a property that I'd done all the research for in Darlington, near Newtown in Sydney, um, was a bit of a dog, but it did 25% last year. So <laughs> you know, we're okay, okay with that. Okay, you're doing well. And what, what about yeah, any renovation this, things? This, any, this is a two-year delay on what I had expected in the growth potential. So, you know. <laughs> Slacksmith saw that there wasn't really anyone in the market who could share quality education and resources during her investing time and decided that she would take the lead in creating this type of community herself. Absolutely. And, you know, I remember, you know, there was this one guy and, and we, we talked about he wanted passive income of $50,000 in 10 years' time. And then he rang up really excited. He said, I found this property and it was like Kempsey or something, not to say anything against Kempsey, mm. but... I pulled up these Residex reports. I'm like, there's zero growth predicted and there's high vacancy rates. And he said, yeah, but it's cheap. It's the guy next to my dad's place and we don't have to go through an agent, so I'm getting it 10 grand cheaper. And we could see that in the next 10 years, it was still going to be worth $250,000. It was going to cost him $5,000 a year and the difference between his costs and the income under we pull in. And it had nothing to do in getting him to the goals. And, you know, it was kind of that aha moment when I thought, you know, Providing people with some um, thoughts and direction is one thing, but being very focused on delivering a, a quality education that people can go through at their own pace and not turn up for a weekend and get the rah-rah excitement and then, you know, get back home and life kind of hits you in the face. Mm. I wanted people to have a resource they could go to time and time again. And and I looked around Australia and I couldn't find um, anyone doing online education in the kind of, you know, 
full of integrity and, and honesty and, and kind of like here's the facts and, you know, take take the information and do it yourself. You know, there's no kind of steak knives being thrown in. So I went to the, the States and I found an educator over there and spent a year being mentored, um, just flying backwards and forwards from Australia and, and learning best practices in, in trying to educate people in the best in adult education and uh, made us <laughs> probably – probably could have bought a house with what I had put into developing the education platform. But um, to be able to communicate those stories and, and sharings and, yeah, it's just, I mean, in, in the last, you know, five years, the the community that we've built and the students that we have, they are just, they're just so lovely and so supportive and, you know, just people in the private Facebook groups, you know, they might be saying, hey, there's a deal on Grays Online. I'm getting a ute together to go down and pick it up. Do you know, does anyone want, me want, want to help, you know, I can pick up stuff for you and drop it off? Or there'll be someone else saying, you know, quick, I need a, a roof repair here and, and people jumping online and giving people numbers and, and or, you know, here's a property I've been looking at. What do you think I could do with the floor plan? And it's just the generosity of spirit mm. and that community involvement that I'm just so proud of. And that's what I wanted. Slacksmith says she's got a deep sense of happiness and excitement to hear her clients succeed which continues to motivate her to help others every day. Look, one of the things when I started investing and and that was, you know, I was looking around 1999, 2000, so I guess, you know, it's almost 17 years of, of investing was that there was a few books and, you know, Jan Summers mm. you know, loved, loved her books and, and Robert Kiyosaki and there was a few educators out there but you never knew who to trust and there was always, you know, buy my course and then it's a goodbye or get my loan or get my, you know, whatever someone was selling and it was kind of that feeling that it was a transaction and and I, you know, I genuinely, for me it's about the stories and it's about the people and it's about getting people to a place that might just be an aha moment or, you know, I spoke to a lady today who thought, that she could do nothing because her borrowing capacity leads her to a purchase price of $160,000. And we talked about areas and the fundamentals of low risk investing and, you know, looking for infrastructure and population growth and economy growth. And we highlighted a few areas that she could afford. And she was just, she was so excited. She said, you know, this is a revelation to me. I I feel I can almost breathe again because I really want to invest, but I feel that I can't get into the market. So it's just those moments that, for me, make my day um, complete, and um, which which are really exciting for me. So, so yeah, that's that's pretty much what we do is provide courses. Ultimate Guide to Renovation is our a premium course that comes out uh, twice a year in February and September. We have a Your Property Success Club, which is a twelve months club, giving people you know at a much lower price point, but a really good quality information every month because I know that everyone can't afford. Um, you know, fancy courses. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we do a lot of Q&A calls, monthly Q&A calls and support. And for me, it's it's um, helping people get over maybe just a tiny little roadblock that they think could stop them and moving forward. And, and that moving forward to us is, um, you know, why we do what we do is getting people to their goals. And there's, and there's new um, websites popping up all the time, you know, and um, it's really exciting to kind of test them out and, and try to break them and see how I can manipulate them for my community's better good, you know. <laughs> so it's like, hey, you know, instead of paying instead of paying for access or doing like a, you know, half an hour trying to find this information on census, if you go to this website, you can find it in a few seconds. And I think, you know, as an investor, we can waste hours mm. and hours on the internet searching without really knowing what the destination is and being really clear on the goal and then your buying criteria and then finding the the suburbs and then the pockets of potential within the suburbs and then the right property to suit the demographic. You know, you follow those simple steps and, uh, you know, you, you're working with the, the, I guess, foundations of a really good portfolio. So, inspired by this story and what Jane Slack-Smith is excited about today, we'll keep the conversation going in a future episode on Property Investory Podcast, where we talk about how to apply the strategy. I didn't want to be an active property investor that is, you know, out there looking at properties every day. I wanted to have a set and forget portfolio that just goes up in value by a million bucks a year, you know? How nice would that be? To success habits for property investing. You know, once I put my mind to something, you know, I, I really give it my all and uh, I guess... 
being tenacious is probably the dominant characteristic of that. And that's in a future episode on Property Investory Podcast. To get the full transcript and see the show notes, visit our website at propertyinvestory.com. Thanks for listening.